Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to the daily His Holiness Chandamoli Maharaj's daily online call. Maharaj, uh, should we wait for a few devotees or we can start? Maharaj, you are on a mute. I can't get the screen right here. There's this big black spot on the screen here. Is it still there? Yeah. Now it's gone. Something is going wrong here. I don't understand. What, are you doing something over there? Uh, no, Maharaj. Can you... Is there something that is appearing on the screen? I will stop the sharing and start again. No, yeah, all right, start from that, yeah. Is it okay now, Maharaj? Not yet. Just wait a minute. Maybe it'll go, it'll go away by itself. These these black black blotches that are just picking up the screen here is one by the translation of the verse. So. Does this make any difference, Maharaj? Yeah, that's now. Now it's okay. Now it's just shifted itself upward, but it's still there. Okay, we can begin. Now you brought it back again by hitting it. Mm -hmm. Okay, just leave it like that. That's fine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, somehow everything is blurry. The, the, the screen is blurry. The letters are not clear. Uh, I'll do it again one more time. It's blurry, but I can read it. That's all right. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Continue with the prayers by Queen Kuti. Queen Kuti has now completed her prayers. And now Krishna is uh, responding in different ways. Well, this is verse number 45. Tambadam ityupamantriya pavishya guja sabayam Triyas Chaswa Puramiyasyan Prayna Raja Nivaritaha. Translation. Can't see the translation, you have to move it. Okay, there you go. Thus, accepting the prayers of Srimati Kunti Devi, the Lord subsequently informed 
the other ladies of his departure by entering the palace of Hastinapur. But upon leave, preparing to leave, he was stopped by King Yudhishthir, who employed him lovingly. No one can make Lord Krishna stay at Hastinapur when he decided to start for Dwarka. But the simple request of King Yudhishthir that the Lord remain there for a few days more was immediately effective. This signifies that the power of King Yudhishthir was loving affection, which the Lord cannot deny. Thus, Almighty God is thus conquered only by loving service and not nothing else. He is fully independent in all his dealings, but he voluntarily accepts all obligations by the loving affection of his pure devotees. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nevese Sasunyavari Vasyatya De Sitarine Panchakopa Thiru Bischa Kripa Sindhu Be Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare One of the uh, characteristics of, qual uh, of uh, Krishna is these Atmaram that means he is not uh, needing anything outside of himself. He's also called Aptakam, which means that he, he can fulfill all his own desires without the help of anyone else. <laughs> but here is an interesting point. He's controlled by love. <laughs> he becomes subordinate to the love of his devotee. In another verse in the 11th canto, 11th chapter, Krishna says, even if one doesn't know me, who I am, what is my existence, what do I do? If they, have, if they approach me with love, they can, uh, then I respond. <laughs> I immediately can satisfy that devotee. I immediately become subordinate to that person's desire because love is there. So this word premna, you'll see it in the, where is it? Premna with love is the indication here. And you see the Lord was about ready to leave. He had finished his business in Hastinapur and now he wanted to go to Dwarka. But Yudhisthira, as it says here, stopped the Lord and implored him, begged him in a loving way. And immediately the Lord decided to stay a few days longer, which will be explained in the upcoming verses. So here's the whole process of bhakti given to us in a, in a nutshell. It's about the position of bhakti is the position of, of loving Krishna. One can work for Krishna and do things for Krishna, but if that if one doesn't have love for Krishna, then that doesn't attract Krishna. If one one may also um, perform various services for Krishna, but if there's no love there or little love, then he responds only up to that point. <clears throat> So therefore, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktiya Mam Twanayan Sakya Aham was the Drusa Uvarjuna. Only by undivided devotional service can I be known as I am standing before you and thus be seen directly. 
Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So when one approaches the Lord, one should develop an attraction for the Lord and not simply try to fulfill one's either spiritual or material desires in devotional service. Uh, material desires, of course, are so one will want performing devotional service for some material gain. Now we see that also. When people approach the Lord in order to fulfill some material need, get their children married to a nice partner, get their children nice education in their schools. They pray for good health. They pray for others using, in a material way, asking the Lord. So in different ways, the Lord is approached. <clears throat> but the Lord is not so much inclined to this type of request or prayer. It says here, one, yeah, he had already decided, I'm going. I'm going to leave Hastinapur. He had stayed long enough. He had, his business was finished here. But King Yudhisthir changed everything around because of his love. He wanted the Lord to stay. The same situation happened when, after Krishna killed Kamsa in uh, Mathura, he wanted to return back to Vrindavan. But Devaki and Vasudev, who hadn't had seen Krishna since he was a little baby in a jail cell, wanted to spend some more time with Krishna and be with Krishna. And therefore, Krishna was in a quandary because the love of the devotees in Vrindavan was pulling him back there. And the love of Devaki and Vasudev and Madhura was keeping them here. <laughs> so Krishna was in a situation where he was getting love from all sides. And he had to figure out how he's going to do this. <laughs> but he decided to stay longer in Mathura, ultimately, and satisfy his, his parents, Vasudev and Devaki, because there were other reasons also, because they were afraid that once he left, then uh, the enemies uh, or the friends of Kamsa would be now the enemies of King Ugarsena, and they would try to attack and overthrow Ugarsena. So they said, without you here, you know, we are vulnerable to our enemies. But when Krishna stayed mostly because of Devaki and Vasudev wanted to experience their parental relationship with Krishna. Krishna never gave them that chance. <laughs> and, but then when they uh, opened up their heart and explained how how lovingly they wanted Krishna to stay, Krishna was overwhelmed and he was actually apologetic to Devaki and Vasudev saying, you know, you are my parents and I, and you gave me everything and, you know, I didn't spend any time with you. <laughs> so, uh, so he, him and Balaram both stayed longer but it was difficult because Nanda and Yasoda wanted him to come back to Vrindavan. So Krishna is, is he is Bhaktavad Sal, he's not Gyanavad Sal, he's not Yogavad Sal. You can learn all of the scriptures, you can recite all of the scriptures, you can write books, you can be expert in chanting mantras, you can perform expert puja, and you can know all of the rules and regulations that make up deity worship. Uh, you can be expert in all of the activities of devotional service, but without love, it uh, doesn't attract Krishna. <laughs> so here's the whole thing. So how do you develop love for Krishna? By serving Krishna in a way that pleases Krishna. And at the same time, hearing about Krishna and his different qualities, pastimes, activities, forms, and chanting his names. These are the, this is the essence of the process. As Rupa Goswami explains, Utsaha Nishtaya Darya Tata Karma Pavartana. Tata Karma Pavartana means performing the activities of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And so this remains uh, the 
uh, most powerful way to awaken our loving relationship with Krishna because Krishna's pastimes, activities <clears throat> are so sweet and so automatically attractive that one develops an attachment to hear these things and eventually uh, one develops an attraction for Krishna based on hearing more about Krishna, ser serving Krishna in different ways. And Krishna manifests and reciprocates accordingly. So this is a very powerful uh, uh, verse here because it really gives the essence of the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, Prabhupada also takes some time when he talks about this verse. He also says, he talks about Hastinapur and how Hastinapur now has become New Delhi. <laughs> We call it Delhi or New Delhi, like that. So these ancient cities that are still here today, their names have been changed, just like we have, uh, it was Bombay, but where did the word Bombay come from? Bombay came from the word Mumbadevi, because the original name is Vipayana. And the original name of Bombay is Vipayana. And Vipayana is the first name of Yasudev also. So then it later got changed to um, Mumbai because there is a deity called Mumbadevi there who was worshiped in that area. And then the name stuck as Mumbai. And the British came along and said, well, Mumbai, and then they did Bombay. Bombay not knowing how to pronounce Mumbai, they said it Bombay, so it became Bombay. Yeah, there's a bay near there. There's the, the Bay of Bengal is right near there. And so they uh, named it Bombay. And Hasti means elephant. It's the place of elephants. In the, in, when, during Krishna's time, and many of the kings lived in that area of Hastinapur and they built great palaces. You have the great, the red fort, which is in Delhi now. It's a huge fort. You can never build something like that even today. And they had many elephants and elephants indicated a sign of opulence. So the royalty would always keep elephants. No one can keep an elephant because an elephant requires so much uh, food per day. Elephants eat 40 kgs of food a day. So unless one is quite wealthy, they can't maintain elephants. I remember when we were in New Vrindavan, we, had, we got an elephant. Uh, her name was Malini. She was a baby elephant. And we, were, uh, we, we got a truck that we he would use to carry her around. We would bring her to different cities in the local area and do Harinam with Malini. And it was nice. The people would come out just to see the elephant. <laughs> and then that would be part of our kirtan program. But as she grew up, her needs became more and more. And then uh, at one point we were unable to maintain her any longer. So we had to give her to, away to a, I think it was a circus. We gave it away, but she came, she got a good home anyway now. But here's an example of how difficult it is to, but Hastinapur was full of elephants because there was such royalty. People say, well, now we're so rich. There are people in years ago, they were poor and they were living in such, uh, you know, uh, low class or uh, very poor types of, but that is also, this is all modern propaganda. It has no truth in reality. Years ago, the kings would have these huge palaces and they would keep elephants, they would keep horses, they would keep uh, various types of animals, domestic and otherwise. Um, and this was a sign of royalty. This was a sign of opulence like that. So these cities have changed their name. Now it's Delhi. Um, I'm not sure how the name Delhi came. <laughs> um, but, you know, Krishna lived there. And Krishna 
you know, his family members were there also. And we see uh, Yudhisthira, he was, he was the capital, it was the capital of that area at the time. And so it still becomes the capital now, but the name is, is changed with that. And so, so this verse is interesting from different points of view, but the essence of this verse is that uh, Krishna is attracted by love. Krishna is purchased by love. Krishna becomes dependent on love. Although he is Atmarama, he is self-satisfied, he appears to be dependent when the devotee worships him in love. In other words, he, it seems like he becomes dependent on the devotee. But it's not that. He's simply reciprocating that loving relationship. So this is Krishna. So that's why sometimes they say God is love. Yeah, ultimately, that's all he is. <laughs> and whatever else he does, it's for to experience his own transcendental pleasure. And so, therefore, one has to develop love for Krishna. But love for Krishna is already there in the heart. So the process is to awaken that natural love for Krishna. It's already there. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sabanari Koi. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. What is that verse? No, I forgot it. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhu Kabunoi Shravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, pure love for the Supreme Personality of God here it sits there as a feature of the living entity's natural existence. It's natural to love Krishna. It is unnatural not to love Krishna. So we're in an unnatural state because we live in this unnatural existence known as the material tabernacle, where everything is turned upside down. What is reality becomes illusion and what is illusion becomes reality. And so the reality is that love in this world means to have more and more material success. Therefore, one has achieved the success of life, which is contrary to the soul's natural existence. Therefore, the soul can only be satisfied when it connects with Krishna in a loving relationship. And love means to serve, and love in the extended definition of love means to cooperate with others to serve the Lord. Uh, without cooperation with others, that love doesn't develop beyond a certain point, or practically hardly at all. So therefore, working together with other devotees, appreciating the association of other devotees, uh, looking for opportunities to serve the devotees. All of these are features of our love for, for Krishna. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. This verse is very right to the point and Krishna uh, shows who he actually is. He is Bhaktivatsa, one who is controlled by the love of his devotee. The non devotees cannot have love for Krishna because they want to use Krishna for their own personal interests. And therefore, Krishna does not reciprocate them with love. That's why sometimes people say, well, I love God, but they don't do anything. Uh, love means to perform activities that express one's love. Love is dynamic, love is not static. Love, you can't just have an idea of love or a feeling of love. Love actually motivates one to perform activities to express love in a, what we say, visible way. So, you know, you used to he had love for Krishna. What did he do? He stopped Krishna. My dear Lord, if you leave, what will we we want you to we want you to be here. We cannot feel we cannot find happiness 
if you depart. And you'll see, Krishna had to really do a lot of things to eventually leave because he, the devotees in Dwarka needed his association. He knew that, so he had to go to Dwarka. But uh, Yudhisthira's love, and also he stayed to pacify Subhadra also, because Subhadra had lost her, her son, Abhimanyu, uh, who was the, uh, also the son of Arjun. So she, so Krishna took a, another opportunity to stay just to pacify and to give some association to his sister, Subhadra, who had lost her son in the battle. So well, Krishna is very kind by nature, and his kindness is, is actually his outstanding quality. Thank you, Maharaj, for this wonderful class. Um, and I think the realizations here, I think what you said is the whole process of bhakti uh, is summarized in a nutshell, which is loving Krishna. And how do we love Krishna? Uh, as you mentioned, is by serving Krishna favorably, hearing about Krishna, which then ultimately helps us to develop attraction for Krishna. And then Krishna becomes subservient to that love. And if anyone approaches Krishna with love, he immediately will respond to that. And this love, as you mentioned, Maharaj, is not uh, an unnatural position. It is a, a natural position. It is dormant. And we have to awaken that love through service and through hearing. So thank you, Maharaj, for this wonderful essence of the verse. Uh, dear devotees, uh, I would... And what you also have, that sometimes when one loves Krishna, Krishna doesn't respond. <laughs> It's like the gopis. <clears throat> the gopis had pure love for Krishna, but Krishna, he left them. He, he even ignored them. So why is he doing that if he's controlled by love? Well, eventually he reciprocates. But sometimes he doesn't reciprocate immediately. <laughs> so we should know that even if we have love for Krishna, he may test our love and see and put us in different circumstances and see if our love is actually gen genuine and is not affected by different circumstances. In other words, if we're down and out and we have nothing, we might say, well, I love Krishna. This is nothing else in my life. But then, then Krishna will come and then somebody will come and give you some money and give you a nice position. You come and you start getting some friends. Then you, then you see, is your love for Krishna actually still unaffected by the changes that happen? Or is it? <laughs> So sometimes we see, because Krishna is a person, he's independent, and he also is trying to uh, increase our love for him. So sometimes he appears to not reciprocate, but he always reciprocates. <laughs> he's God. <laughs> and he... He works for the, the benefit of his devotees all the time. So the gopis didn't need their love tested, but he, he put them in a situation just to show that even if he doesn't reciprocate their love, their love doesn't change to show the world that here is the ideal example of love. That even if I don't reciprocate, they still go on loving me. As lishya vaparatam pinas tumam, adarshanam marmahatam karotuva yatatatava viradatut lampato, 
Matranam Nastu Saevanapadaha. Radharani's expression of unalloyed bhakti is illustrated in this verse spoken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Doesn't matter, Lord, whatever you do, my love is still there. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, so a little yeah. extension on this verse, just to just to qualify how Krishna is. Yes, he's controlled by love, but how he responds to that love may be different from circumstance to circumstance. <laughs> but you can know for one thing, he's always there. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, dear devotees, uh, we would request you to please turn on uh, the cameras to make the session more interactive. Uh, it's a humble request. And uh, please, um, if you have any questions, we encourage to ask questions, share your realizations um, about the verse or about the subject matter. Thank you. <laughs> Kanchana, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. <laughs> I'll shave, I'll shave tomorrow, sorry. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> I think, I think I, I, I... Maybe I can ask a question, Marad, now that I'm here. Okay. Marad, sometimes when we're trying to understand Krishna's love, um, it, it, it can, like, it, it sometimes feels like he's, he's it sometimes feels that Krishna reciprocates um, not always through. Um, not always through uh, joy that sometimes krishna is reciprocating within the heart to teach us a lesson um how do how do we how do we understand what the lesson is <laughs> well sometimes it becomes obvious just by the way you live, you can understand what Krishna is doing. And then you look at your own life and you reflect on it. What is he teaching me? Or we can also say, my dear Lord, you, know, you put me in this situation. What can I learn from it? So we can also pray like that. But if you're not sure and you want to verify it, completely then speak to your best friend <laughs> and see because usually our best friends know us better than we know ourselves and the best friend is a person who is not he has your interest at heart so, so we all should have someone and we can go to to answer these questions, get clarification. Every devotee should have that, no matter who they are and what position they have in, in devotional life. Everyone should have someone they can talk to when situations become a little, in, in, what is the word, Again, enigmatic? enigmatic yeah or mysterious mm. but but if you can reflect and sometimes due to our own reflections we can see we know we sometimes we see our attachments we know it's an attachment but we like it anyway <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And Mark, sometimes it also seems that, um, yeah, sometimes even when we're with the spiritual master or with, with other senior Vaishnavas, that they can, they can, they can show us that somehow or the other, they can show us what our shortcomings are. Um, how to remain, how to not get, how to not feel bad or how to not, yeah, how to not feel bad that we have these shortcomings. When you realize you, you're, you're not perfect. <laughs> 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 That's not hard to understand. If you think you're perfect, then apparent revelations of shortcomings is like is like uh, an egoistic blow. <laughs> mm. Well, when you're if you're developing the quality of humility, then when we're shown or when things are revealed to us, we actually uh, appreciate that. Okay. A person will not appreciate it. A humble person will. Okay. So it's about cultivating humility, and then we can appreciate. Yeah, because humility means that I'm actually trying to make advancement. So whatever, whatever comes my way that helps me, and yeah, I'm grateful for that. Mm. I take advantage of that. Okay. And it also depends on what is the strength of our desire. Do we actually want Krishna? Or do we want to be we want to be situated somewhere somewhere in devotional service where we can fulfill our material desires? Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's so it's 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 ultimately how much we want Krishna, and then we take it in the right way. Yeah. If you actually really want Krishna, then you'll accept all of these things as opportunities to increase your relationship with Krishna. Wow. Okay. And see, sometimes how I personally feel, Maharaj, is that I may, I may be corrected or I may be shown through the guru or through other Vaishnavas that this is something that I need to work on or like I can't accept fault or I'm, I'm proud or I'm getting jealous, whatever it is. Um, I think because there's an inner insecurity about myself, just I'm just insecure, then the, because there's insecurity, all these so-called, no, not so-called, all these anartas that are naturally being revealed, they, they sometimes make me feel like, oh, what if, I, what, if that, what, that, what if that devotee doesn't, won't like me anymore? What if I won't get that devotee's association anymore? You know, all these kind of negative thoughts start to wear me down i guess it depends on who's revealing it to you also mm. okay and then the closer the person is to you in a real way that means if they're actually your friend then you can accept it as you know an expression of their concern for you Okay. If someone is not so close to you and just knows you and just does it, you might think it's just their ego. Mm. And so it, could exactly be, the, it could be okay. just their ego. It could be just their ego also. <laughs> but if it's someone close and someone advanced and someone close, it's because it's someone it's close to who you have a relationship with. Yeah. If it, but if it's done in a way to make you feel bad, then uh, it's gonna it's gonna cause the, the opposite reaction. If they're mm -hmm. close. To, if they're close to you, and they care about you. And you can sense that. Then they'll do it in a way that is uh, what we say beneficial or effective. Mm -hmm. I mean, Prabhupada yeah. could could do that. And the devotees could accept it, but if someone else did the same thing, whether yeah. they wouldn't accept it in the same way. Right.
Wonderful. Thank you, Marge. I think I think the this the main thing for me from this is take the yeah. opportunity to get closer to Krishna. Well, you know, here, yeah, one of the things is if we think we're perfect, then whatever comes our way, we'll, we'll, we'll simply, we'll just reject it. And we'll blame the other person for not understanding us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have that habit of blaming others and never thinking anything's my fault. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank even you so it, much. Even if it's their fault, you can still learn from me. Yeah. Just like I'll give you a personal example. Um, uh, when I was in, it was in London, and I was uh, going to this one, I was going to the temple. Uh, I used to have a habit when I used to lead the kirtan, uh, when the response would come from the devotees after me leading, I would somehow or other hum into the microphone the response, not saying the words, but hum. So uh, it was like a habit that I had to develop. I would just you know, kind of like hum the same melody that people were responding to me. And then I got a letter, a note from one senior devotee, you know, stop humming into the microphone. <laughs> And so he didn't give it to me personally. He did it through another person. And I was thinking, what is this? If he wanted to speak to me, why did he give it to me through another person? So initially I was a little disturbed. But then I thought, hmm, okay. Well, I can definitely learn something from this. I can stop humming. <laughs> so I made it a point to be more conscious of that. And then eventually it went away. I didn't, I stopped doing that. And then, uh, but I was still a little disturbed, not so much of the criticism, but the way the criticism came. It mm. came by a note that was delivered by another person instead of the person himself, who was the one who sent the message. And then I didn't say anything. And then about, a couple months later, I was with that same person. And he said to me, you know, Maharaj, I've been feeling a little disturbed. You know, I sent you that note about that thing. And, you know, I want to apologize for that. <laughs> so I didn't say anything. I said, well, yes, actually, it did cause this. I actually acknowledged that, yeah. I said, why don't you just talk to me directly? He said, I'm just sending a note. <laughs> Because how do you respond to a note, you know? <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> it's like a one-way street. Here, take it, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we can still try and learn the lesson, even if, however it comes. Yeah, so I, I, I took the opportunity to correct that, you know, that yeah, habit I had. <laughs> Mm. Well, thank you so much, Maharaj. You've sh shone a lot of light onto inner ignorance. Thank you. Yeah, well, we, if we're always reflective of our situation, we can always learn a lot about the, both the situation and in ourselves. How do we relate to and respond to other devotees or other situations? This is one of the more biggest ways to so how to fine tune our devotional service. How do we respond? Mm. How do we reciprocate? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu, for asking such a deep question. Um, it's helpful for all of us. Thank you. Uh, Renuka Mataji, um, you can go, and then Sri Devi Mataji, you can go next. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandava. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Um, Maharaj, uh, this is regarding uh, what we talk about love per se. Uh, we, we always claim that uh, we can conquer Krishna by love. 
but uh, considering we are such imperfect people, the sense of love that we have is a feeling or a sense of attachment. We don't really know what love really is, you know, and what kind of love, because, um, you know, we, we experience love through our relationships given to us, maybe father, mother, uh, our children, um, you know, our husband, or a spouse, um, brothers, sisters, but love per se always hurts, you know, the deeper you love, the more you get pain. So in, in a way, you know, uh, we do not know what love really is. You know, what love are we talking about when we say loving Krishna, the perfect, the perfect person, you know, the absolute truth, the absolute supreme. If we are even thinking of loving, we are so imperfect, you know, and we expect Krishna to reciprocate. I mean, this is something which I am never able to envisage how as such an imperfect person, I would ever be capable of loving Krishna so much that he would reciprocate. So for me, I don't know what love, what form of love, what level of love we are expecting from ourselves. Are we really capable as human beings of even loving that much? Because in today's world, we, I think love, love is just pain. You know, the more deeply you love, you are a sure, short formula for pain no matter whom you love, what you love, I mean, what is material, but you know, love is equal to pain for me as per my experience of last good 40 years of life. So I feel that, you know, is, am I gonna have that pain for Krishna? You know, I cry for him, but then is that enough? Is that enough? Would, would anything, you know, that I know as love will ever be enough for Krishna? So for my, for me, my question is, you know, we don't, we as human beings, we don't know what love is. So how are we supposed to love Krishna when we really don't know what love is? It's yeah. so perfect in Kali Yuga, in today's world. This love is, I don't think this love is what love can attract Krishna because this is so imperfect. It just gives you pain. Well... You covered a lot there. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. This is my favorite topic. Well, it's the best of all topics, and it needs to be discussed. Um, when you kept emphasizing the point that we don't know what love is, Bhishma Dave, and grandfather Bhishma Dave, gives a definition of love. Uh, but it doesn't tell you exactly how it plays itself out. It just gives you the definition of what love is. Is to repose, the word repose, to repose all of one's attention and affection into one object. <laughs> and the word all is there, reposing all of one's attention and affection into one of one's object. So that's Bhishma Dev, and that's quoted in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, how to, how love plays itself out is a very great mystery <laughs> because people show love in different ways. But when love has an element of personal interest in the expression, it becomes less than what it actually is. So love has no personal motivation. In other words, even if I don't re get anything in return, still I love you. That is actually the, the element of love. And that's what Radharani is teaching in her own and the gopis and many of Krishna's that I just want to please you. I just want to satisfy you. I just want to be with you. Even if you don't do anything for me, still my love is not going to change. So it's, it's an affection that is not uh, supported by any personal desire, personal motivation, personal gain. Rupa Goswami also mentions that in his verses describing what is pure bhakti without any personal gain. 
even the desire to, to experience the reciprocation from the lover of the love that you give to them. <laughs> that is pure love. But we expect that if I'm giving love, I should also receive love. <laughs> but you can understand with Krishna, he will reciprocate. <laughs> How he does, or when he does, and then both of these points are important, is his prerogative because he knows exactly how to do it in the best way. So just try, Prabhupada said, just try to love Krishna. That's all he said. And the more we get attracted to Krishna, the more we lose our attraction for the things in this world and the so-called relationships that we have in this world, which may have some element of affection in there and some element of attachment in there to fulfill certain needs and desires, but it falls short of real love. Uh, to describe what love is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they give a little example of love, pure love for Krishna using food items. And they mentioned five items, which are, you know, it's like saffron and uh, what is that other stuff that is musk, all of the most uh, desirable scents and uh, elements of the material energy. Uh, I forgot what else is it. It says one verse that mentions for certain things. Oh, sugar cane, <laughs> the sweetness of sugar cane, the fragrance of musk, and the what else? Uh, and camphor, and what is that other? Yeah, saffron. But then the last ingredient <laughs> is black pepper. <laughs> so the love has that element in it where it also is a little something else. <laughs> so you can expect that even in loving Krishna, there's going to be some pain. But that pain is actually an element of your love for Krishna, that you're willing to undergo that pain in trying to love Krishna. And that's also there. And that, that black pepper is more like the separation we experience in our loving relationship with Krishna. Thank you. So yeah, it's a great topic. There should be books written about it. There are books written about it. The whole Bhagavatam, especially Chaitanya Taritamrita has a lot of uh, Lord Chaitanya's love for Krishna in Vrindavan, there's a whole chapter how Lord Chaitanya is going mad <laughs> trying to experience that love with Krishna and the ecstasy that he experiences. So love is natural, but in this world, it's been perverted by selfishness <laughs> that, that's how i feel sometimes that you know in today's world if we are not able to uh, experience uh, love then uh, you know uh, um, our brain our emotions function uh, only on the basis of what we have experienced like for example if i've never tasted um you know, sugar, I would not know what sugar is. You know, if my entire life, I haven't tasted sugar, I will not know what is the taste of sugar. So yeah, in so today's true. world, where I see, you know, even if you're experiencing love for Krishna, or you can think that you're experiencing love for Krishna, you to slow down. Because somewhere you're married, somewhere you have kids, somewhere you have responsibilities, somewhere you have duties, which ought to be fulfilled. So, you know, you are holding your love and still aspiring for it. It's a, it's a paradox. 
You know, you don't. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, Maharaj? Welcome to Bhakti. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't, when you can't take this world anymore, and you only want Krishna, then Tatwa yes. Dehom Purnam Janma Naiti Mamete. Krishna is waiting for that. <laughs> when you don't but want yeah, it. When you don't. When you don't even want life itself, and you only want Krishna, then you are back to Godhead. <laughs> but how many? So we have to approach that 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 goal in in the practical way. And what is that? That find out how to please Krishna, and work in such a way as to perform activities to to please Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. We want to please Krishna, so these are expressions of our love for Krishna. Even if pleasing Krishna causes us some difficulty, it doesn't matter because when when that desire for to please Krishna is there, it overshadows the difficulties. The difficulties actually become, um, as Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur expresses that. What are my happiness is in devotional service, and then he goes through a whole series of different things he mentions. Then he finally ends, he says, my happiness in devotional service is the difficulties that I experience in your, in, in your, in your service. I have something to offer. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your answers. Thank you very much. It really helps. And I, I'm Just, so happy to be part of this group. I'm very keep, new. Just keep trying to love Krishna and you'll see it'll naturally become more and more your nature. Please bless me so that I can. It's only with your blessings that I can reach anywhere. I have no qualification, no hope for myself. Bless me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, we all feel like without the mercy of the spiritual master, without the mercy of Krishna, our desire to attain Krishna will never happen. And Krishna, is, he, he's, he wants all of it. He doesn't want you to share that love with anybody. <laughs> now, I use, this could be a cause of breaking up marriages, but anyway, it's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have realized this. No human being can is capable uh, of loving another human being. It's even, impossible. Even if his name is Krishna, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, Maharaj. It's not possible at all. It, it, he has designed it so beautifully that each soul has so much love within, but you know, we can't give it to each other here on material world. He wants everything for himself. So no matter well, how, who we reach to, who, you know, our kids, we find the best of sons, but then still, you know, it's not complete. And, you know, we know yeah. we're something, missing something. And, you know, that small link of puzzle, it will always be missing. And but you always Yeah, but you should, you should understand one thing that how love is expressed is not necessarily the way we think it is. For example, the more you love Krishna naturally, the more you will also love his parts and parcels. But that love will be spiritual, not material. You'll do things for those other living entities that will be beneficial for their spiritual life and not so much for their material, uh, you know, welfare. Yes. Yeah, My so it's not that it's not it's not that you can't love others, but loving Krishna extends itself to all living entities because Krishna is he is mula, he's root. So our natural love for Krishna is compared to watering the root of the tree, and then everything connected with the tree gets the benefit of the watering process. Similarly, if we have genuine love for Krishna, we will also have genuine love for his parts and parcels. But that will be expressed in doing, giving that other living entity Krishna. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I mean, Prahlad Maharaj tried to make his father Krishna conscious. <laughs> he couldn't do it. <laughs> but he still loved his father. He was a big demon. But because he loved his father, because he was he had love for Krishna. And eventually he asked for pardon for his father. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and Krishna knew him. that. Yeah, and the Shringadev knew that ahead of time and already gave that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your answers. Thank you for your patience. Thank, Thank you for you. conducting these classes every day. Thank you very much. It's just Thank holding you. us all everywhere. Thank you, Renuka. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Maharaj, we have two questions. I'm assuming we are okay for the time. Uh, yeah, today is wide open <laughs> yes right. so maharaj there is one uh, asha mataji uh, will come back to you uh, there is one question uh, from mohana sini mataji uh, she is saying on the chat guru maharaj is it bad to have attachment like to wish to have own family house etc mana so deho geho yogi humor arpilu to alpade nanda kishore Bhakti Vinod Thakur was a magistrate. He had a big position, but he had also a big family. He had a house. He had many children. But at the same time, his love for Krishna was was supreme and prominent. So he one should think, well, my children, my home, my possessions, my very body, it's yours. It belongs to you, Lord. They're not mine. Janasamoham Yamaham Mameti is, is not our program. This is mine and this is I. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything is controlled by the Lord. Whatever the Lord may give us in our life to live, to live, we can use in his service. So keep your family, keep your home, keep everything, but to spiritualize everything. Turn it into, use it in Krishna's service. If you see it separate from Krishna, that's material. If you see it belonging to Krishna, that's spiritual. And that's correct. <laughs> So you, have your, so you have your daughter, you take care of your daughter, right? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. But you make her Krishna conscious. <laughs> <laughs> and another point of that is to live according to your needs. If we have too many material things, which occupy our time and attention. And then that kind of takes away from our opportunity of do in devotional service. So, Ishavasham Midam Sarvam, like that, everything animate and inanimate belong and owned by the Supreme Lord. And one should live according to their quota. In other words, uh, gorgeous living uh, or poverty. Uh, makes Krishna consciousness very hard to execute. Both. One should live according to their mean needs. That means we, had, we can't go with the flow of the world. The world is always pushing us for more. We have to learn what we need and live accordingly. That's it. If we live a little bit under, a little bit over, that's all right. But if it becomes uh, a focus in life, then it becomes a problem. In other words, if we're struggling because we don't have enough to maintain ourselves, or if we have too much and we're just getting, uh, we're wasting time with all these extras, then uh, we have to consider, oh, do I actually need these things? Or do I actually 
need some more in order to maintain my consciousness so I can focus on Krishna nicely. So too much or too little is both the disqualification or an impediment in our execution of devotional service. Does that help? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for coming to the retreat. <laughs> Asha Mataji, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance at your holy feet. Maharaj, my question was there for a week. I couldn't ask because uh, I know you were tired because of traveling and then there was a lot of people asking up questions. So I just kept a hold on that. But it is really bothering me a lot. Uh, Maharaj, when someone tells you that practically it is not possible to be in Krishna consciousness 24-7. But if one desires for the same, Will Krishna listen to your desire and help you to remain in Krishna consciousness 24-7? And is it okay to desire such a desire, knowing that you're not eligible in any ways and not thinking that it's not possible because I'm not a saint or advanced devotee? Please help me, Maharaj. Well, it reminds me of the verse in the Bhagavatam, Savai Pum Sam Paro Dharma, Yato Bhakti Ahuksaje, Hoitukiya Priyata, Yatma supersedity. So, Haituki Apriyata, these two ver words are outstanding in this verse that real devotional service has to be unmotivated and uninterrupted in order to satisfy the self. So, unless we come to uh, unmotivated, uninterrupted devotional service, there's always something that needs to be. Uh, gained in our de execution of devotion and service. We can only feel satisfied if we're always engaged in devotional service and we have no personal desire for, uh, for the execution of our service. So it's not only practical, it's doable, and it's the, it's the directions of Krishna. Uh, Sutta Goswami speaks this verse to help us understand that yeah, that uh, this is our nature. The soul is 24-7 for Krishna. <laughs> to use a, a cliche. It, it, was, it was really bothering me a lot. And I was crying, crying, crying. I couldn't speak to you. I couldn't do. So I was just praying to Krishna that today, at least I have to ask Maharaj this question so that I can remain 24-7 in your consciousness. Because re other things really bother me a lot. I don't feel... I, I don't feel inclined to those things. I don't know, but some of them are calling me crazy. Some of them are telling me that it's not possible. Yeah. If we listen to other people, they have, it's very fashionable that people want to tell us what's good for us. <laughs> we, should, we should listen to Guru. We should listen to Krishna. We listen to Srila Prabhupada then we can find out what's actually beneficial for us. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, I, I just want to read some uh, read out something for you uh, because I read it somewhere. I just kept a note of it and I just added two lines in that. Uh, it says, Hare Krishna, when I truly desire you to be happy, I when I truly desire you to be happy, I love you. When I truly desire you to be pleased, I love you. When I happily and wholehearted sacrifice my interest for you, I love you. When I just want to give you and don't expect anything in return, I love you. When I completely surrender onto you without any regrets, I love you. When I'm crying and still thanking you for the tears, I love you. When you accept a fallen soul like me, you love me. When you forgive me for all past deeds, you love me. When you shower mercy on me and protect me, you love me. When you give me your remembrance and guide me back to Godhead, you love me. Sometimes I don't understand that you love me, Krishna, but yet you continue blessing me and you love me. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, very nice. That was beautiful. Thank you. 
That's a nice expression of bhakti. <laughs> yes, send that to, uh, let's see who we can send it. Send it to, uh, we have our host today is uh, Diptesh Prabhu. Send it to, to the Diptesh. He can give you his email address and then he can send it out to anybody who writes to him. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank yeah. you, Thank you Maharaj. Uh, is that all right, Diptesh? She can, she can just send it to you? Yes, Maharaj. I've, I've shared her my email on the chat now. Yeah. And then uh, anybody who writes to you, you can just send it to them. Yes. Just all they have to do is request it and then send it out. Thank you, Thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. That's nice. Very nice. <laughs> Says a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji, for sharing that wonderful realization and your questions and, 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 and uh, the poem. Thank you very much. Um, devotees, do we have any more questions, uh, comments? I, I would say it's easy to love Krishna. It's really hard to love somebody in this world. Because <laughs> so, Krishna is Krishna's lovable. And we have to create this mindset of loving somebody in this world by, by what do they call it? Cut, cut and paste, cutting a few things away, pasting some few things on and you put some patches and pat work over here. And <laughs> Maharaj, so, Maharaj uh, I would add one point that it's in my life that in this 50 years, what I understood is that it is easy to, it is easy to be what you are, but it is very difficult to be what you are not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but everyone wants us to be what we are, we were not. So, in that sense, it's difficult. <laughs> yes, it's difficult. Okay, so I saw Sri Devi before and her hand was up, but it looks like she, oh, she's still here. She, she is back. Uh, Mataji, do you want to ask a question? Well, I, I think we're we keep, we keeping you up too, are we keeping you up too late, Sri Devi? It's like quarter to 11 now, right? No, it's quarter to 10, Guru Maharaj, and I jumped okay, off only because the internet just stopped working. The power went off. Fire away. You want to, yeah. You want to ask your question, Mataji? You had your hands up before. Is that okay? It's too late. It's Maharaj. up to you. Mm. you I have to... don't mind, Guru Maharaj. Uh, my question was this that in the association of devotees or when the spiritual atmosphere is very strong we can keep our consciousness high but then when we come away from the temple and we are back in our own homes and the day wears on then our default thinking comes back into force and we find ourselves back again you know ruminating over something or brooding over something or hankering for something, lamenting, that means our consciousness has come down. So how can we keep our consciousness high throughout the day? Easy. We just remember Krishna. <laughs> well, why are you forgetting Krishna? That's your problem. <laughs> just don't forget Krishna. <laughs> you have a choice to think about whatever you want to think about every moment. So when you're being supported by a very powerful spiritual atmosphere, immediately when you leave that atmosphere, think of Krishna because you know the energy is going to be different. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, I just I went through that yesterday. The energy went up, and then all of a sudden mm, went down, and I said, "All right, Hare Krishna." <laughs> so 
Just remember Krishna, that's all. Even if you don't get any ecstasy from remembering Krishna, at least you're in the best position because you're remembering mm -hmm. Krishna. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you, to all the Vaishnavas. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so we can... We can end. Stop here. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai His Holiness Chandamoli Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai Thank you Guru Maharaj Diptesh, uh, send me that thing that Asha wrote as soon as you get it. Yes Maharaj. Okay. Okay, thank you.